Hi, and welcome to part 5 of this big up plugin development. So for part 5 to the rest of the parts, what I think I'm going to do is we're going to create a full plugin from start to finish, all the way up to exporting it, the plugin to Spigot MC. So the plugin I decided to make is the bit staff. So I'm going to create a full staff plugin that should be available on Spigot MC after. So first things first, what should a good staff plugin have? So staff should be able to freeze players, ban or kick players with a specific reason. It should be able to mute players and mute players for a specific time, go on and off duty, have different types of roles, so moderator, admin, and helper, and those different types of roles have different commands associated with it. And they should be able to go into a staff mode, which turns them invisible and allows them to teleport to any player. And they should also get warnings if a player is behaving erratically or suspected of hacking, they should be able to get warnings. And for this staff plugin, there will also be a private channel for only staff to message in. So you can do slash staff chat, and it'll go into their own specific chat channel. But for this episode, we're just going to focus on the first one, which is the freeze command. So for the freeze command, the first thing we got to do is extend sorry implement command executor in the listener and after that we gotta we gotta check if the player is a player or if it's the console sending it so if we go to the ide you can see we're going to create a normal spig out plugin group id is going to be me.evil terabyte i'm just going to name it staff plugin for now and this description will be staff Plugin authors evil terabyte. And finish. I'm gonna name this staff plugin as well, and we'll get it open. So first things first, I'm gonna expand the source all the way down main Java staff plugin Java. So this is our main class. And over here, I'm actually going to put a logger method. We get logger dot log level dot info. Whoops. And we'll do bits staff started exclamation point. I'm going to import level as well. Awesome. So we got the logger and we're going to send a message to the console saying bit staff started. Put a space there. All right, next up, I'm going to create a simple uh, commands package inside the staff plugin. I'm going to call this commands. And we're going to start off with our first command, which is the freeze command. I'm going to name it freeze command. And inside freeze command, we're going to import two things. We're going to implement two things. We're going to implement the command executor, which executes the command, and we're going to imp implement a listener. All right, so let's get these methods inside. There's the command method, and now we also got to get the listener method, which we can call with at event handler, and we'll put it over here: void on player move, player, move, oops, event, event. Okay, so basically what's happening here, we're, call, we're calling this a command class and a listener class. So over here, uh, down on the on command, it's going to say this is what you should do when the player runs the command. And then the event handler tag here is like, look here, this is what's what you're going to do when the player moves. So first things first, we're going to return this true. And we're going to create up here a list. We're going to make this a private static list. Or let's do an array, array list containing players. Oops, player. Import array list and player. And these will be all the players that are currently frozen. We can even make this final here. Awesome. Let's close this off. 
All right, so the first thing we got to do is check if it's an actual player or if it's a console. So we're going to do if player, oops, if the sender of the message is the instance of a player. So this is checking if the sender is a player. We're going to create the player. Player, player equals player. This is just saying the player is the sender. And if not, uh, sender dot send message cannot execute from console. Awesome. What's next? We're going to see is the player actually a staff member on the server? So we're going to to do that, we're going to use the has permission method that's included in the player class. So if the player has permission, let's say bits.moderator. So if the player has the permission bits.moderator, what we're going to do is check if the arguments, so basically when a player is typing a command, I'm just going to write it up here, the player is going to do slash freeze and let's say my name so slash freeze evil terabyte so we're going to have the first command and then we got to take this argument and see if it's a player because if this is a player or if it's not a player then we got to handle that situation so if the player has the permission bit stop moderator and if the args if the length of the arguments is equal to one right because this is this is the first argument right here Okay, so if it's equal to one, we're going to do uh, the player, the target player is equal to, and cast this to player, args zero. Sorry, bucket dot get player args zero. We can remove the cast here as well. Okay. So over here, arg0. So we're checking if the arguments, if there's at least one argument, so where it has an argument right here, at least one, perfect. And if, so over here we're getting the player. So if the target, a get player, and it gets the player in this, right? If there's no player, it's, this is going to be null, so we can't do anything with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if target is null uh, we can send sender dot send message player is not online awesome now we got the player and we can check if the player if the, if the player is null player is not online awesome Next, we're going to assert that target cannot, absolutely cannot be null. This is just making sure that it's not null before we pass it on to our next stuff. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, sorry, if the player doesn't have any permission, we're going to send them no permission, which we can do simply by adding an else statement right here. Uh, we can do player.send player message chat color.red plus no permission. And we'll import chat color from org.bucket. This basically makes this message red. All right, next up. If the player has permission, we got to check if the target's already frozen. So to do that, we have our we have a bunch of frozen players in this list, right? So we can check if if frozen if frozen players contains the target, we can freeze the player here. So we'll go up here. And we'll put an exclamation point, which basically says, if frozen players does not contain the target, then we'll freeze the player. And if the frozen player does contain the target, we're going to unfreeze the player. Which shows here, 
freeze, and un unfreeze. That's literally it for the freeze command. So now we just gotta come up with these methods to freeze and unfreeze the player. First thing, we're gonna add if the player, if frozen players does not contain the player, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add so frozen players dot add target to the frozen players list. So now this whoever is this, so for example, if this is me, they're gonna be added to this list, right? which doesn't freeze the player yet it just adds them to the list of frozen players and if we want to unfreeze the player all we got to do is frozen players dot remove target awesome next we're gonna we're just gonna add a chat queue which will play after the player is frozen so we're gonna send the staff member chat in a green message you have frozen space plus the name of the player. So target dot get display name. Awesome. And over here, we're going to, oh, let's send the target a message as well. So target dot send message chat color dot red. You have been frozen by staff. And when the player is unfrozen, we're going to send the staff message in green. Oops. You have unfrozen plus the name of the player, the target, sorry. And we'll send the target a message in green as well. you have been unfrozen. All right, so now that we have our methods done, what we can do is actually work on the logic. But actually, before we do that, over here, we're checking if the command is correctly processed. So if the player adds too many too many uh, arguments we can we can just send the player message saying this is how you use the command so slash freeze player or we can even put player in curly braces there we go so if the if the staff member gets this command wrong right here it'll actually send them and say hey that's not an actual player Perfect. And then now let's, let's let's work on the methods to actually freeze the player, which is really really simple. So if frozen players contains event get player event dot set cancelled true. Those are th three lines. You can even say two lines to freeze the player which basically says if if this list contains a player cancel cancel their move event so they can't move at all and we can even go as far as to declare the player whoops player frozen player equals event dot get player and we'll replace this with frozen player frozen plus player dot send message chat color dot red you have been frozen by staff awesome now let's go to the server and see if it works all right so now that we're back in the server we can test out the freeze command so we're going to do slash freeze and this should give us uh the usage of the command so it'll it should say slash freeze player, which it does. It shows us that we need to input a player variable or input the player that needs to be frozen. And since I don't have a friend on, we can do slash freeze and we'll do it on myself. We'll do slash freeze evil terabyte, hit enter, and it says you froze evil terabyte. So the you froze evil terabyte will only show to the staff and the player that's been frozen would not know he's been frozen unless he moves. And it's gonna keep spamming. You have been frozen by staff, can't do anything, can't look around, player's stuck essentially right and now let's unfreeze the player 
actually first let's check if the player has a prefix when he chats yep frozen evil terabyte and it sends a message and we'll do slash freeze evil terabyte again to unfreeze him and it says you unfroze frozen evil terabyte and it says you have been unfrozen by staff and now as you can see whoops i'm free to move around all right so now that this works we can continue to the next step Ch check in on the next episode cheers